Honor, and we are honored today to have Attorney David Daggett with us. David is an avid cyclist, but he is also an amazing Ironman triathlete. So David, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, we're going to talk about the new bicycle laws, and they changed to North Carolina December 1st, I believe. Uh, some of them changed October 1st, and some changed December 1st, but they're all new for 2017. Okay. Now, you wrote a blog post recently, and you talked about them imposing both rights and responsibilities on the rider. What are some of those rights? Well, the rights that the, li the riders have have changed. Uh, North Carolina, for years, had had what's called the two-foot rule which means when a motor vehicle's on the road and it passes a cyclist, they had to give two feet of passing room. Now, more than half of the states in the United States have a three foot rule. Cindy, you're from Pennsylvania. Right. Pennsylvania has a four foot rule. We had a two foot rule. Well, what the biggest change in the law, I think, is that in a no passing zone, which are most of our urban roadways and narrow country roadways, there is now a four foot law in North Carolina. So cars have to give you four feet, not two feet, four feet. Okay, okay. So when passing, which is a major, major safety improvement for cyclists right. in North Carolina. So they have to get four feet or be fully in the other lane uh, they have to give way if you're turning left. Um, so it, it puts those responsibilities on motorists, gives more rights to cyclists. The one thing I'm always cautious of when I'm talking to cyclists is remember, motorists don't know these new laws. Right. Okay. Just because we know them, we can't get indignant with motorists. We just have to help educate, be yes. good ambassadors for the ongoing safety of cyclists. So yes. I think that's the biggest new right that, that cyclists have is the four foot rule. Okay. Remember, uh, on average in North Carolina, we have, uh, I, I think it's a neighborhood of 30 cyclists killed every year on the roads and more than 700 injured. Wow. The vast majority of the injuries happen on in the urban areas where the four foot rule is now mostly in effect and most of the deaths occur more in the rural areas uh, okay. the rural, and, and that's because you're on higher speed roads uh roads that don't have improvements such as bicycle lanes and uh other traffic awareness devices does okay. that make sense that makes it sense? does make sense yeah okay so that's a great change so so uh there's that I, another, which I, I will call right uh, for cyclists, is historically you had to give hand signals with your left hand. So you turn left, it's this. You turn right, it's this. And to stop, it's putting your arm down. I don't know if you can see that, but it's putting your yeah. arm down. So but the, where those uh, rules originated is back in the days when cars didn't have turn signals. And obviously you had to do this because yeah. you can't, you couldn't stick your arm out the right window. Okay. So okay. sort of old laws, the new law that went into effect now codifies that bicyclists can use either arm to give directions. It's fairly intuitive anyway, but you, you can now do it. Yeah. But the one thing I do remind people uh, is cyclists need to be aware of what's around them and what's going on. Remember, depending where the car is, they can't see your right arm. So depending okay. on what type of traffic yeah. you're in and that sort of thing, you still may want to do this, but you can also do this. I've been right. known, you know, keep hands on the handlebars, of course, but I've been known to do this, put a hand back down and do this. Okay. So, so to try to eliminate confusion with the motorists and try to help motorists who are who are on the road. Right. So uh, I think those are very significant rights. The other thing that has happened is in North Carolina, we had laws that protected motorcycle riders. So mm -hmm. if you force a motorcycle rider to take an avoidance uh, measure either out of their lane or off the road, 
it was a it's a two hundred and fifty dollar minimum fine. Well, that two hundred and fifty dollar fine now applies for forcing a bicyclist out of the, your lane or off the road. If it causes any damage, it's a five hundred dollar fine. Okay. If it causes more than five thousand dollars worth of damage, which is most cyclists know, bicycles now cost in that range. Yeah. Or there's what's under the law is serious personal injury, which usually means you need medical attention. It's a $750 fine. So laws that were put in effect uh, a number of years ago to pr protect motorcyclists, give them extra protection, those now apply to bicyclists also. So okay, excellent. I, I think those are very, very good laws. Right. And I think what you said, the important thing is for us, and that's what we're trying to do today, is really educate motorists as well as as the bicyclists absolutely uh, and, and as bicyclists know 99 percent of all motorists want to help us uh, right. and so we need to help them to help us help educate them uh, uh be polite be good ambassadors mm -hmm. on the road uh I, I think that leads to some of the changes that are responsibilities for right. bicyclists um historically what we had in North Carolina is when riding at night, you had to have a uh, front reflector and rear reflector. The rear reflector had to be visible from 250 feet back. But that has now changed. I think it's a good change that you now must have a light, not a reflector, a light visible from 300 feet and or, or you can have reflective clothing or reflective vest that's visible from 300 feet. Okay. When riding in the dark, I actually recommend both. And it's interesting, uh, Cindy, the last couple of years, uh, uh, light technology has increased with LED technology. Yeah. And I have relatively inexpensive uh, LED lights. They recharge in a USB port. They're very easy to put on the bike and take off. I actually use those for daytime riding also uh, because anything we can do to protect ourselves and be more safe, uh, the, the, the better. And here's the really interesting thing that I have found out with lights on the bike is when we protect ourselves and look out for ourselves, wear a helmet, have, have good lights, that sort of thing, motorists are much more friendly to us. Okay. Uh, the and other in fact, interesting was, thing uh, is, a, is a bicycle accidents tend to occur either when a car is passing and turns short on you because they don't realize how fast okay. you're going. So, yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know, when I'm riding a bike, I could be going 25, 30 miles an hour. The, the cars think you're going 10 miles an hour and they don't do it intentionally, but they, but they, they cut you short. Right. Well, light on the back helps in that situation. The, the other situation that you have is cars coming the other direction and making a turn in front of you. Yeah. So, so I also use a front white strobe light. Okay. Very easy. It, it straps right on the handlebars, no fuss, no muss, charges in the USB port. And, and again, it increases your visibility. Anything cyclists can do to increase their visibility, I, I think is very, very valuable. All right, well, listen, great talking to you today. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay. Be safe and, out there. Okay, so Take that's care. it for today. Till we see you next time. Thanks so much. All right, bye-bye.